make sure you check out my website pcteach.me where you can look at all the videos in particular category orders also have the ability to contribute your own posts if you wish and I hope to see you there so we're going to talk about the remaining attribute properties now on dimensions so what we're going to do is uh, going to open up the next project file and um, this is called remaining dimension attributes so now I'm in here what am I going to talk about well we're going to use a different uh, value here we're going to use the customer dimension which I think we put the very basics in um, from the previous video and again what we've got though is we've got the same sort of things here is the create hierarchies in non-parent child dimensions and so forth so is there any hierarchies that we can have in here well yeah there is sure let's just throw some in I suppose so we'll have um, let's have marital status um, and um, gender so um, is that a balanced or sorry is that a natural hierarchy um, well marital status and gender well okay yes I suppose it is is it going to be anything to add value to I don't know maybe um, so we'll leave that there but obviously there's the geography information that we could also incorporate in if we've got it and also the occupations and so on so we could add our own um, particular hierarchies in but the key reason I've come into here is to talk about some of the other values for example yearly income now what you may want to do and what quite often needs to be done is when you're doing analysis especially when you come to things like data mining is that you generally when you're doing um, survey results your survey information is normally saying that these are customers within a certain salary bracket um, well you can do that within cubes because at the moment if we just process this um, okay I know that we've got marital st marital status problems sorry we have particular problems with the hierarchies um, but um, well if you do work in IT you generally have marital status problems um, so if we just run this and, and process it um, and we go to the browser tab um, yeah okay the hierarchy we've got male female uh, married female male single female male fine we've actually got the yearly income and the reason I've done that is as you can see like it's just 10,000 20,000 30,000 40,000 what we may want to say is we say well actually there's what how many customers there was quite a few I think 16,000 we may want to actually break these into specific um, groupings well this is where we come across one of the most interesting words in analysis services and it's called discrete oh, I see I can't even say it discretization buckets discretization methods um, discretization basically is the ability to say okay well I've got a value but I want to actually narrow it down into buckets now if any of you have ever done um, an age debtors report or any kind of aging report you have buckets you would say 0 to 30 days and 31 to 60 etc etc well this is what discretization is all about however it's not controlled by you it's controlled by the computer so at the moment it's on none which means great I'm just gonna see the individual values but what I can do is I can go in here and I could say well I want it on automatic equal areas or clusters well what's the difference well automatic does stand standard uh, sorry um, it does square roots I was going to say standard deviation but it's square roots what it does is it takes the total number of rows and does the square root to work out how many groupings there are and then it will just then put them all together so generally automatic not a good idea what you're more likely to do is do equal areas and clusters clusters perhaps not for yearly income but things like oh let's have a think um, how many are dog owners um, you may want to cluster your information into that um, or what types of dog um, you know um, or what kind of pet that's probably the ultimate do you are you a goldfish lover are you a cat lover are you a dog lover are you um, a parrot lover um, those sort of things that's where clusters come in because it would actually then cluster the information into logical groupings of information now bear in mind you have seen clustering to a certain extent already um, let me just bring this down again um, you may recall the data source view if we um, actually explore the data we can actually see 
in a form of way in the chart are clustering of information you can see North America Europe and so forth so what we could do is we could say well we know roughly with the data that there's actually four sales territory groups so we could actually put it on a bucketed count of four and then the computer will then logically work out those particular groupings but what you may find is there may be other information where you don't know how best to actually structure it and that's where the clustering technique comes in and that's very very prevalent in data mining circles. In the situation that we've got here what we're going to do is we're going to keep it nice and simple so the discretization count is going to be set onto um, equal areas and we're going to say there are five equal areas. Well actually let's say there's four areas that we're interested in on the yearly income. So let's save that and then we'll just uh, reprocess it. Again we've got the squiggles I'm not too worried about this on the customer dimension and run Okay, that's done. And close again. Browser, we need to reconnect as before. But now can you see yearly income has now been broken down into these particular settings. So what that's doing is ultimately it's putting anything with um, 10,000 to 20,000 and it's then retaining all the customer keys associated with it. So it's a form of grouping. So you've now got grouping on here. But now the question becomes, well, what about if I was still wanted to see yearly income in my report? Well, what you'll need to do now is you'll need to put it in again. So what I would suggest is you would call this um, yearly income grouped and then you would then find yearly income again and add it back in and just leave it as yearly income and reprocess so we'll reprocess again and all being well run and wait for it to close close and if we go to the cube I suppose is the best way of looking at it in the browser um, we'll reconnect. Reprocess the cube would help with all the changes that have been going on. Oh, that's better. Oh, reconnect, there we go. So we've got our customer. So I want to look at the yearly income grouped. So we do that, bang, and then we go to our measures and we can say, okay, I'm interested in the sales amount. And there we go. So I've now got my sales amounts on there. But what I could do is at the same time is I could say, well, you know, to be fair, what I want to do is I also want to look at the customer key. So I can slap that in there. But now it's done it as a hierarchy. It's automatically worked out that there is some logical representation. So if I expand that, what that will do now is it will give me the individual customer keys, which is the customer names in effect, and the yearly income. So what's probably a better option is let's remove customer key and put in that full name named calculation we've done. And if we put that in, there we go. So we can now see anything where the salary was between those, day, um, between those values, and that's our sales amount. So fantastic. So then we can then go even further and start putting our date ranges in, which aren't present at the moment, admittedly. Um, but that's what discretization is all about. And it's a very small option, but pretty, pretty good. So what else is there in the properties to be concerned about? Well, just about everything in here, you really, if you're going to go for the exam, you really need to understand properly. So we'll go from the top down and explain what all of them do. So attribute hierarchy display folder, what that does is it allows you if you have got an appropriate product um, the client machine can actually then filter them. For example if you're using Excel 2005 and so forth forget it, it will not work. But what we can do is because if we've got 2007 is it will use these folders. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to put in the word test for last name and marital status um, come on wake up there we go marital status the same again test okay that's all I'm gonna do I'm not gonna do any more than that um, but what that will mean is that when I reprocess this it has added to the attribute a display folder so if the client machine can handle it it will actually show those folders possible um, attribute hierarchy is enabled um, this is a pretty important one because you may want to turn certain things off. It is a very bad idea to turn off the key um, because you need that attribute hierarchy. All the others um, you may want to actually turn off um, as being um, in a hierarchy or, or an attribute at all. It's not a generally good idea because if you don't want to show them, don't put them on. Um, that's the way I look at it. So if you don't want title, throw it away. Don't 
put it there and then turn it off because if you do that can you see how it's just grayed it out now so basically it's an invisible non-used field well, why have it there in the first place attribute hierarchy is optimized state it's fully optimized and then you've got not optimized um, the reason for that is that you may be saying well okay is title something I'm going to aggregate on a regular basis? Well, probably not. So do I really need the cube to be processed at a fully optimized level? No. So we can turn that off. So that will give you a performance boost. Fantastic. Attribute hierarchy visible. True, obviously. Default member. Multi-dimensional expression, um, MDX, we'll get to that much, much later on. Let's just bring that up a bit further. If no default member is specified, then the default is all. Right, let me show you this. This one is important. If we go in here, uh, let me just throw away um, the yearly incomes. And so with it all removed, let's just say I want to get hold of customer. And if I drag and drop that on, what's going to happen? Well, what it does is it immediately goes straight to the default hierarchy, which um, I've got in. Um, marital status and then gender, female and so forth. Because what I'm telling it to do is just purely by dragging and dropping, put in the value. So if I put in full name, in this case, it will then bring in each individual um, person, which is going to take a very long time. So there you have it, there are all the information. But when you come to using a um, front-end tool, when I drag and drop customer, what is the default value that's going to be um, put in there? Because the manager may just say, oh, I'll just chuck the customer in. But they're going to want to know, well, wh which field do you want? So by default, what will happen is, if I chuck in any of these particular values, rather than the actual full name, it will just bring in uh, the all option. So if I expand members, you'll see this all. And then when I expand underneath it, then the actual individual people's names. Um, so on full name, yeah, that's... There we go. So all and all that. So when you drag and drop the value, do you want it just to put the all value in, which just is the total, or the individual um, individual um, employees or individual customers in this case? So over here, what we've got then is when we've um, got this, is is this the default member basically? And then what you do is you can then choose a specific member. So do you want always Mister to be the first one um, when you drag and drop the whole thing in? Well. No, we'll leave it on all. That's generally the accepted um, option. Next two, we've already seen. Estimated count. Um, this is useful uh, later on when we do our um, aggregation designs in regards how much um, hard disk you're going to say um, use and how much processing time is going to be required. Estimated count just helps later on to indicate that there's 10,000 rows because again you could be working on data which has only got 200 rows in it but the actual full system is 200 million rows so you may want to actually specify in here 200 million so then when you're actually doing your processing it works out based on the volume and frequency of data not just what you've got on your local development machine. Is aggregatable true? Well, you may want a dimension value on here which is not aggregatable um, and it's fair enough to actually have that. Uh, for example, geography key, it may be something you want to actually see on there or a PO number or so on, but do you want to aggregate on it? Um, well, maybe not, so you can actually turn it to false. It's still visible to be viewed in here, um, but you will not be able to do any aggregations on it. And as you can see now, it's starting to scream. It's saying, hang on, um, you've not defined this um, non-aggregatable value, um, so you need to and do a little bit more work on it. Um, no, it should work fine. It's just, it's just Microsoft being Microsoft saying to be made completely performant, you need to have that completed. So at the moment, we're going to leave that on because my attitude is, if it's in there, you're going to want to aggregate on it. Um, underneath it, descriptions. So again, those front-end um, um, computers, they would allow you to um, see that. So you could just say, this is the geography key. Um, and then type and usage, we've already um, spoken about to um, some degree, which is our um, templates, if you will. And also usage, we've not really spoken about. And again, this is something we're going to look at in a little bit more detail, which is the parent-child relationship. Um, so at the moment it's a regular, but we can actually say that this is a parent and a child, which, which we'll see shortly.
Um, attribute hierarchy is ordered. Well, yeah, fair enough. That means that that particular value is going to go 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, not just any number it wants to be. Do you want to encourage grouping? Is this something that you want grouping together? Well, again, you could say, well, no, it's not. We're not interested in the key being grouped together. Um, instance selection um, would specify um, the client UI. Um, so what this basically means is that if you are doing any reporting, do you want it to immediately bring up a pop drop down box um, or a list and so forth? Um, where that comes in handy is Report Builder. Um, and Report Builder you have custom um, queries um, and if you're going to create your own little filters and so forth um, do you want them to type in or do you want them to just choose from a drop down list so if it is a grouped item a drop down is a pretty good idea um, but if it's a list of people's names you may just want to actually allow them to type in whatever they want or make it mandatory that they must choose a filter before they can see the results particularly useful if you've got um, say 50 years worth of information stored and you only want to make sure that they can only filter on a specific value um, like a year. Um, so I'm going to leave that on none. Uh, member names must be unique. Um, what this means is are the values contained within here unique? Well generally the answer is no. The only one that really would be this is um, potentially the customer key. But again um, because we're in the realms of cubes and dimensions that may not necessarily be the case. There, there are rules to that and um, that's when we come to snowflakes later on um, and then we've then got our members with data at non-leaf level um, data is visible or data is hidden so are you wanting the people to see it at a summary level only so if they try to go down to the individual record of the customer do you want to actually show that information so for example I may be interested in the hierarchy the marital status I want to see total children on marital status but do I want to actually see Fred Bloggs's total children so you can control what level the data is actually shown at and then members with data captions specify a string used to create a caption for system generated data members um, Basically, this is a way of if you've got a calculation or some awfully spelt word, you can actually put in a friendlier caption um, to show the information. Naming template. Um, in here, this is um, quite handy, especially when you've got um, a detailed um, level of hierarchy. Um, so what you can do is you can say um, on parent child, this is very, very important, you can have manager and employee. So you could have level one, which is everything, level two, which will be manager and level three, which will be employee. And we'll, we'll look at that on the parent child later. Uh, root member if parent is blank. Now you may recall I was saying about ragged hierarchies and so forth. Well this is really where it comes to. Um, so if I'm at the region level and I'm going down to the individual um, um, city but um, unfortunately London ha is its own region what you can do is you can specify in here and say that um, the actual parent is the root level. Um, so that basically means that it will skip the uh, the hierarchy if you will and London becomes the top level but then London can become London underneath it as well so parent is self parent is missing so you can actually even say well actually if the hierarchy is not fully fleshed out and it's not um, balanced um, then don't show it at all so it's not even visible which uh, depending on your point of view is how strict you want to be with your data uh, unary operator column um, the unary operator, if we click on the three dots here, tell you what, let me just make this box bigger because I think it speaks for itself down here. If you're doing parent-child hierarchies, um, what you may have is a value that you may not want to add up totally. Um, you only want the latest value and so on. So the unary operator column indicates what the parent value is going to be. So if I'm going to add it, do it to the grouping of this value above. And then as we go down, we've then got the source values, which is basically where we've been before, which is defining really um, the key column 
and the name column, which is what we've done in the past for the dates, the years and the months and so on, um, as a way of showing it. So that from top to bottom is a whirlwind tour of what the dimension attributes are all about in regards to the properties. Um, there's one final thing we need to do, which is the parent child, which I'll do in the next video. But then after that, that is dimensions more or less covered until we actually start building the cube again. So for this video, this is the end of it, and we'll now move on to the parent child dimension. Hub.